Thank you, Mark. Our scripture this morning comes from Psalm 23. Next few weeks, we're going to do something a little bit different with our scripture reading. We're going to actually read it responsively together. So I'll, I'll lead us in that, and the responses will be on the screen. Let's read Psalm 23 together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures, leads me beside still waters, restores my soul leads me in right paths for the sake of the Lord's name. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord as long as I live. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you join with me in a prayer before the message? O oh, gracious and loving God, may the words of my mouth and meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh, Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So this week, we continue in our sermon series, Greatest Hits. This series is all about looking at some of the most beloved psalms in the Bible. Now, the book of Psalms, as Pastor Sarah talked about last week, is the original songbook of the Israelites. And these psalms had music to go along with the lyrics. Now, last week, we explored Psalm 98, discussing how music can bring about change individually, but also in society. And asking, what does it mean to sing to the Lord a new song? to bring about joy through songs of peace and liberation. So this week we turn to another beloved passage of Scripture, Psalm 23. Now this psalm is often read at funerals, at least it has been in my, um, in my own life, and so it provi- because it provides peace and comfort to those who are mourning the loss of beloved family members and friends. And I'm sure many of us have a connection with Psalm 23. Perhaps it's one of our favorite Scriptures, um, perhaps we, we have been in a funeral where it's read and it meant something, it meant a lot to us. Or there's lots of different connections with this psalm because it's, its language and its, its uh, poetry is very beautiful and connects deeply within your soul. So I'm sure everybody comes with some different connection with Psalm 23. But however you have met the this, this scripture in the past, I invite you to hear it anew this morning. And I'm, I'm going to read it again one more time. I'm gonna, and this time, first I read from the Revised Standard Version, this time from the Common English Bible. So maybe a little bit different also than you're used to hearing it, because I know many know that King James Version of Psalm 23, but this morning you're hearing a couple different versions. So here's the Common English Bible. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He lets me rest in grassy meadows. He leads me to restful waters. He keeps me alive. He guides me in proper paths for the sake of his good name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no danger, because you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they protect me. You set a table before me right in front of my enemies. You bathe my head in oil, and my cup is so full it spills over. Yes, goodness and faithful love will pursue me all the days of my life and I will live in the Lord's house as long as I live. So begin, I, I want you to think about a place that you would describe as your happy place, a place where you feel at home or at peace, where you feel rested, where you feel loved, a place where you can just simply be you and let all the worries of everyday life kind of just fade into the background and just simply be. You have a place in mind? What are some places for you? Where is your happy place? Go ahead and shout them out if you have a happy place that you like to go to regularly. The beach. The beach. What, was that? what was that? Sitting outside. Sitting outside, yes. The beach, sitting outside. The farm. The farm. Yes, the farm. What? Comic shop. Oh, comic shop. Yes, that's great. 
Sorry, I thought you said something else. I had to make sure. Uh, comic shop, yeah, perfect. Beach, farm, comic shop. And the others? Sitting outside, I forgot about that. Yes. Barnes and Noble, okay, nice. You're on the books, yes. Yes, Ginny. Mountains, yes. Yes, and the, I'm from the Black Hills, so I totally, I totally relate with that, yes. On your porch, yes. Any others? The spa, yes. One more. What would you say? Recliner. That's a great one. <laughs> so whether it's in a recliner or at the beach or at a comic shop or or sitting outside, or wherever it is, those, those places are special for us. They, they make us feel happy. They give us joy. They help us find rest. So for me, one of my favorite um, happy places in the world is Storm Mountain. So talking about mountains. Now, Storm Mountain, for those who do not know, it's out in the Black Hills, um, East Central Black Hills, nestled just south of Rapid City. It's a picture of Spring Creek. It runs kind of right along the edge of Storm Mountain, like on the property there. And it's a beautiful place to rest and renew. And I've gotten many chances over the past decade to go there and council camp or just go there and rest. It's so beautiful next to the creek. And it just helps you to kind of forget about those to-do lists, all those things you need to be working on just for a moment, just to rest. And to hear the wind blow through those beautiful ponderosa pines or the creek babble through the valley or to rest in those grassy meadows beside those restful waters. And I think for, in many ways, this psalm has become almost, a, Psalm 23 has kind of become a personification of Storm Mountain for me because it just reminds me of it every time. It's that place where the Lord is my shepherd I lack nothing. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me to restful waters. He keeps me alive. And some of those happy places we talked about, it reminds us of, of our God who provides for us and gives us a moment to simply rest and be. God provides all that we need. In Psalm 23, it's a, it's a song of trust. It's trust in this living God to provide all that we need. And even in perceived calamities, we talk about in here with the darkest valley, the valley of the shadow of death, that King James Version translation of that. But there's an expectation that God will deliver the psalmist from that. There'll be a table established. There'll be grassy meadows to rest in. There'll be restful waters. And God is depicted as the shepherd who provides it all so that the psalmist will lack nothing. God provides all that they need. Now, contextually, the Middle East. Now, I, I've never been there myself, but it's often hot and sandy and windy in many places. And so it's a little bit different than that first scene of Spring Creek. I'm thinking, wow, you know, <laughs> I'm not exactly sure if it's the same place. But there are places in the Middle East where it does eventually get to be that green and lush. But it's not all the time. And it's very much a special treat, a special pleasure for those in the Middle East. For it only rains about four to six inches every year in some places in Israel. And when it does rain, the ground erupts and flourishes and many flowers and grasses. And it is beautiful. It's wonderful. So this precious grass that only comes for a season, you think, oh my goodness, we, okay, it only comes for a little bit. We have to make sure we collect it up, make sure we get all of it together. Well, here in Psalm 23, this special grass that's rare, well, God lets the psalmist lay in it, to sit down in it and treasure it. God lets the psalmist rest in those green meadows that treasure, that happy place for the sheep to rest in. It's a gift to simply be in that place 
and rest, be provided with food and water and shelter. What's it like to be able to sit on the beach for hours or sit amongst the mountains and hear the wind blow or be in our happy place at Barnes & Noble or a comic shop? just to be in that place where we find peace. It's joy. It's restful. It's peace-filled to be able to rest in that space. You know, work, of course, is vital too. And work can sometimes be our happy place. That's good when work is your happy place too. But there needs to be a balance. For work can provide purpose and necessities, but it, it is work all that we are. You know, of course, we, we dream of retirement as that time where we will be able to rest beside the still waters. Or maybe we think, oh, retirement is that time we get to do everything else and fill our to-do list up. And so heaven is that time where we get to rest. You know, whenever we have a conversation with somebody, one of the first, com- first topics of conversation is, well, what do you do for a living? What, what, what do you do for work? Or what did you do for a living? It's such a part of who we identify ourselves in our culture with our work. But is that the end of who we are? I I think, therefore I work. I don't think it's fully part of us. It may be a part of us. I think for myself it is. But it can't be everything. We are made in God's image. Our God, whose name is I am who I am. I will be who I will be. A God of being and life and creation. A God who does marvelous and wondrous works. But then a God who rests on the seventh day. Jesus, in his ministry, doing all these amazing things, teaching all the time and and preaching and walking many distances, takes time to rest and renew and go to deserted places and pray. In the context of our psalm, the good shepherd makes the psalmist lay down. Here, lay down. Let me provide for all that you need. Because it's going to restore your soul. And if you do not take this time, you will burn out. Back in January, I went through a sermon series called Soul Reset. It was by an author named Junius Dotson. And he wrote in his book, quote, A rested body will energize your life. A rested mind is capable of creative thinking. Our spirits need time to reconnect to the source of our identity as children of God. We need to create the time, space, and rest to remember who and whose we are. To remember who and whose we are. In those happy places, in those grassy meadows, and beside those still waters, those places where we can remember who we are and why we do what we do those other days of the week. Taking time in those restful places to restore our soul. Rest is present within the fabric of creation. We are made to have rest and renew in this life. It's not just for heaven. You know, an area of society where I, I, I was thinking about where to kind of talk about this, but there's, there's a lack of rest, particularly, it's particularly striking within youth sports culture. Now, I'm not here to shame people or families who have people in sports. I was part of sports. I played sports throughout my whole childhood. I still try to play Not as well anymore. Um, I'm out of practice. And I think sports are a wonderful way to grow up, to build character, to find connections, and be well. But as Heather Burgesson, she's a a sports medicine physician and pediatrician in Minneapolis. And she has this TED Talk back in 2018, and she, she talks about how our current youth sports culture is putting youth at risk. She relays countless stories of of young children who who are coming into her clinic, and these children, 
ages 7 to 12 or maybe even younger, are coming in, they're, they're playing year-round and they're, they're practicing year-round and they're specializing in sports at a younger age. That means they're, they're just picking one sport so that they can be the best at that sport. And they're coming into their, her clinic with injuries to their growth plates and their bones that are growing. And hopefully not causing permanent damage, but she's seeing that about 50% of the injuries coming into her clinic are due to overuse. Overuse. They are using their bodies too much. Therefore, these injuries could be prevented. But the psychological toll is almost worse, she says, as overzealous parents and, and coaches end up pushing the kids to the breaking point of their abilities. No pain, no gain. Win at all costs. And their lives becoming narrowed down to one purpose, the ability to hone their sports so they can get scholarship money at the end. Youth sports, according to Burgesson, has become a $15 billion industry. Now she says, she remarks, I love youth sports. I think they're so important. She has her, she goes, I have a, a hockey kind of rink set up in my own house. So I think youth sports are important. But she's worried that rest, needed rest, is not prioritized in our culture. And so she advocates for a change to it and emphasizes on fitness and connection and growth and ability. But fun, too and not just how great their child may be. Now, this can kind of translate over to wherever we're at, whether it's sports or work, or whatever we're putting our most effort into. No matter our age, we need rest. We need to be simply in grassy meadows so we can recuperate and our bodies can rest, our minds can rest, our spirits can. Now, notice how in verse 2, it says in many translations of Psalm 23, it says, He makes me lie down in green pastures. He makes me. If you're not finding time to rest, there will be a time when your body will have to rest, your mind will have to rest, and you will rest in green meadows because you have, been, you have burned out. There's a crucial balance between work and rest. It's hard, to, it's hard to get to. But life is more about doing good deeds or, or working or playing sports or whatever it is you're putting 90% of your week into. Sometimes life is simply about being, being in community, being with friends, being with God in the wilderness, being at Barnes & Noble or the comic shop, being wherever it is that you find rest and joy. Resting and vacation and taking breaks are not signs of laziness, but signs of reverence for how God has made us to be. Creatures who co-create with God, but also creatures who rest in grassy meadows. God provides all that we need, including giving us space to not only work, but rest. So take time. Pencil in that vacation Advocate for those who do not have access to the rest that they need because our society only prioritizes advancement and productivity. But God is the provider of all that we need. And one of those needs is rest. So rest and renew in the living God, the good shepherd who lets us lie down in green pastures, those joyous places. Don't feel guilty about doing it, but find those places to rest and simply be. Build it into your daily rhythm so you do discover that these happy places in life are not just rare things like those meadows that only come up a few weeks out of the year, but they can be found week in and week out as we take time to rest in God. Let us pray. O gracious and loving God, we give you thanks that you are a God of creation, but you are a God of rest. You help us to lay down in those places that give us joy, that give us happiness. You help us to find those moments of rest 
that can help us to give meaning to those other days throughout the week where we find joy in sports and work or whatever it is that we're doing. Help us to find a balance. Help us to see your life, that this creation that you have made is good. And we can take time to work, take time to rest, and take time to praise in it all. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite us to stand and sing as we are, stand as we are able.